Hey what's up ladies and gentlemen, I'm Inezalea and today I will be showing you how to create the floating leaves from the movie Bird Box. I really enjoyed the effects, I didn't really like the movie though, I think it would actually have been better if I watched it blindfolded. Now that's what I call a good movie. And this chips actually taste better with my blindfold on. It opens my taste sense a little bit more. You should try it. But yeah, that wasn't the case. Anyway, we're only interested in the effects used in this movie. We're going to be seeing how to recreate that in Adobe After Effects. If you're interested in the same footage as me and all the tutorial files, I will put a link in the description below so you can go ahead and download these to follow along with this tutorial. And if you're wondering where I got my music from and sound effects, I actually got them from Epidemic Sound. And if you click on the link in the description below, you get a 30 days free trial to use their music and their sound effects. It's really cool. Cool. they have a ton to offer from sound effects and music I always find what I'm looking for so yeah this is basically my most favorite library anyway let's jump into Adobe After Effects and get started alright so here we are in Adobe After Effects and this scene is what we will be recreating today so we're going to make the leaves from the ground float up a little bit so what I've done is I shot this footage here and then I also took some leaves from the floor and I attached a small wire to them and then in front of a green screen I made them kind of look a little bit different each time I took a few different leaves to make some variation you can go as crazy as you want with that if you have the option to rotate the leaf uh, in a kind of creative manner that would be better um, but I had a lot of wind and I wanted to take that in the same scene and yeah so it's a simple tutorial I didn't want to go too far in the details so we can still easily recreate that scene so I have the footage right here which you can download with a link in the description and then I also have these leaves right here in a folder which you can see uh, look like this I already keyed them out for you guys so you can use these in your video so what I'll do is drag my video into a new composition and there we go so let's start from here I'm going to uh, change my resolution back to full and as you can see the footage is actually on autofocus because I'm a one-man band I don't have anyone that can record me so right here we do see a little issue here but yeah that's just a simple uh, yeah fix with manual focus so next time I hope I'll do better okay so what we want to do is right click and create a new solid layer and this is going to be a white layer or it actually it doesn't matter which color but this is going to be our alpha we're going to uncheck this layer and I'm also going to mute the audio so we can preview and what you want to do clicking on that solid layer without seeing it going to the pen tool and make a mask around the floor just like that so just try to kind of capture the area of where the leaves should be generated from that's what we want to achieve here okay so we have the floor and if we're going to check this back on we can see that now we have a floor mat Another thing I want to do is actually mask myself out roughly. I know I don't move much, so I'm just going to roughly mask around myself. I don't want leaves spawning on the area where I'm standing. And then I'm going to press M on the keyboard and just subtract this mask right here. If we're going to bring this on again, you can see that only here and here leaves are going to spawn. So what we want to do is click on the alpha, go to layer and pre-compose that move all the attributes into the new composition and adjust the composition duration to the time span and we're going to rename this to alpha mat. Okay so now we have our alpha we don't need to see this in our scene we're going to right click and create a new solid layer and we're going to need rename this particles. So we're going to be using a plugin called Trapcode Particular. It is a plugin but it's a very powerful one I really love it and if you're gonna play with particles anyway don't try to make it harder on yourself. Trap code particular is just, yeah, whatever you need to do particles in Adobe After Effects. So we do have our particle generator, and if we're going to check this, it's just simply emitting particles right here. But before we start playing with this, we actually want to create a composition of our leaves. So we're going to click on the uh, the folder, click on the first leaf and then hold shift and select the last leaf. Now we have all of them selected and we're going to drag them into a new composition. And the option we want to choose single composition and the still frame duration 
we can set it whatever we want. I'm just gonna go for one second. And then I want to check sequence layers. This is a very important and then click OK. So here we have our leaves and as you can see, if you go through this timeline, you will see different leaves popping up on the screen. I also have the same leaf that I just colored a little bit more red so we have a little bit more variation. That's also something you can do and yeah play around with everything and uh, with the techniques shown in this tutorial you should be actually able to create much better results with the tips I give you. So here we have the main composition scene 2. I'm gonna bring this up front and the particles right here. Okay. So now we want to drag in our leaf composition that we just created into our composition. And we don't want to see it, so we're going to see leaves. We don't need that. We're just going to toggle this off. And there we go. Also, we want to create a 3D layer of this layer. So toggle the switches if you don't see that. Make this leaf layer a 3D layer without seeing it. Then go back to the particles. And actually, I want to uh, solo this for now just so we can concentrate on them. Maybe I'm going to lower my resolution to half so we work a little bit faster. And I'm going to save my project so we don't lose anything because Adobe tends to crash once in a while. So in the particular settings, we have a bunch of tabs that we can open. The first tab that we're going to open and concentrate on is the emitter tab. For the particles per second, we're going to change that immediately, but let's start off with a 25,000 particle generation. And for the emitter type, we don't want to use a point, but we want to use a layer being our alpha mat that we created in the beginning. So to select your layer, you have to go to the emitter tab right here open it up but before we do that we actually have to create a 3d layer as well from the alpha mat so go to the alpha mat make it a 3d layer go back to the solid and then we can select layer alpha mat and there we go so now you're going to see that the particles are spawn across the surface of that alpha great next you want to change the direction from uniform to directional and we want to play with the x value here negative 35 let's play with that and see what that does Okay, so that's kind of going upwards, so that's what we need. And for the velocity, let's start with a 500 velocity and also change it random to 100% or actually 85, uh, so we don't have any very slow ones. And let's see what that does. Okay, so for the direction spread, we can go for 10%, so it doesn't spread too much across the area. And then we want to play with the particle settings. So open up the particle master and life, I'm going to change it to like 25 just long enough to see them across the entire yeah track of your timeline then let's go back to the beginning of our timeline we're going up here to the particles per second we want to create a keyframe for the particle particles per second so we're going to click on the stopwatch move one frame forward and uh, I'm doing that with the page down key on my keyboard by the way and I'm going to zero out my particles and I can see I don't have enough particles so you can go back and now change it to 50,000 or something like that and just play around with it. You're going to generate like on one frame all of your particles, then they're gonna freeze, they're not gonna spawn anymore because that's not what we want. We want the leaves to already be there and stay there and also not die off. That's why we changed the life to 25. Okay, so we have that for now. We wanna go into the particle type. Instead of sphere, we wanna change this to a textured polygon. For the texture, we can open that here and go for the layer of the leaf. So it's quite big, so what we wanna do is, uh, we're actually going to prepare that first. I'm going to set this back to none. We want to go to our project manager and drag our leaf into a new composition right here. Then right click, create a composition settings and change it to 500 by 500. It's just gonna be the best results. Of course, it doesn't have to be like that. It's still gonna work. This is just the best way of doing it. And I shot the leaves in 4K, so that's why I'm going to scale them down. Press S on the keyboard and scale them down like that. Go through it to see if every uh, leaf is actually in the shot. Like right here, we see that this leaf is not in the shot. We can move this a little bit, drag it down and start over. Okay, so everything should be in the shot right now. Great. So now what I want to do is change the composition name to just leaf particles or well yeah particles okay and that's going to make it a little bit more logical for us so we can delete this layer right here we're going to load in the leaf particles okay so we're going to uncheck that we don't need to see it and make it a 3d layer 
go to the particles, go to the effects controls, and now we want to change the texture layer to leaf particles. So that's going to work a little bit faster and easier. And immediately you're going to see the leaves now being particles. Of course, they're way too small. So what you want to do next is go into the size and change it to like 65. Maybe that's going to be a little bit too big, actually. Yeah. Okay, so 35. Let's see what that does. And that looks a little bit better. And 40 random. Let's change it to 100%. And again, so you don't have too many small ones, 85, and change the size to 27. That seems about right. Okay. Next, what you want to do is open the rotation tab right here. We want to rotate our particles a little bit. So we are going to use the random speed X, Y, and Z. So what I'm going to set here is I'm going to click on here 0 0.03 over here 0 0.03 and yeah just a very low number it's gonna be very subtle you can play with the orient to motion or not I prefer not to use it in this case and on to the next settings you can play with the shading if you want to but in this case I don't find it necessary to play with that open up the physics tab and here we want to add a little bit of air resistance so open up the air tab and in the air resistance, we want to change this to 0.5. Click OK. OK, so now we have something good going. Let's do a small preview. And actually, the air resistance is just going to kind of push down the leaves with the velocity going up. And that's also what's going to happen with real leaves. If they're going to be pushed up by the wind, it's going to kind of resist the wind above it because it's a flat surface and it kind of restricts it to, to move upwards easily. If you would throw a bowling ball, that would be a different story. And I do find that some of the leaves are way too small, so I'm going to change the randomness uh, of the leaves. So right here we have that going on. Looks pretty cool. And I forgot one setting that is quite obvious right now. So the first thing that we'll do is go to the size random, change this to 50%, so we have a little bit and settle randomization and then next what I forgot to do is actually at the texture of the particle that we changed to the leaf particle it set a time sampling loop on a random basis we actually want to keep the random but we don't want to loop it we want a still frame and there we go let's do another preview okay so looking a lot better so what I'm gonna do is now check it on my actual footage and I also want to cut off like the first frame because right here it's not spawned yet so I'm going to add one frame forward press B on the keyboard to trim it until here and now we have our leaves right here we do see that leaves are kind of quite a little bit darker so what I'm gonna do is go to effects color correction and add a curves adjustment and just increase the color or actually the brightness of the leaves and then I also want to apply an effect color correction, hue and saturation. Here you can play with the adjustments to make them match a little bit more the scene. So I find that they are quite a little bit more saturated than the leaves in the area. So I'm going to lower the saturation. And you can also play with the hue if you find that the colors aren't exact as in the scene. So this looks quite a little bit better. I'm going also and add an effect blur and sharpen in a camera lens blur. Very subtle at like 2% or even 1% just to give it some kind of slight blur. We can also go into the particle settings and go into the rendering mode and go to the blur, motion blur and instead of comp settings just turn it on and change it to 180 and change the opacity boost to something like 10 so the motion blur tends to play a little bit with the opacity so that's why we're gonna be doing that. Let's do a preview on the actual footage now okay so that looks pretty cool um, I do think the velocity is a little bit too much so I'm going to change that back to something like 300 and another thing if you find that you have way too many particles or way too few and you don't want to change the first frame because you have to go back to that keyframe what you can do simply is alt click on the stopwatch of the particles per second and you can either divide it or multiply it so I'm going to divide it by two for example and I'm going to have half as many particles and I think I had too many so that's why I did that and you can always go back into the leaf alpha to adjust it a little bit more so you can go back here and maybe play with this one here 
press M twice on the keyboard and kind of shrink that mask expansion, feather it a little bit, go back to the composition and now you'll have a little bit more leaves closer to my body. So that's how you play with that. I just wanted to show you that. Um, and then the next one I want to do is create a new adjustment layer. I'm going to bring this to the top. And this is going to be like a subtle animation because it's tension. Something is happening. So I'm going to do a small zoom in my shot. It's always better if you had that up front with your camera uh, for the parallax effect, but then you have to track in the particles. Uh, you can do that. It's uh, absolutely no problem. So I'm going for distort and I'm going to use a transform setting here. And I'm going to click on the stopwatch for the scale. Well, actually, I'm going first back to the beginning of my timeline. Click on scale and position. Move all the way till the end and do a very subtle zoom. Also, maybe move up a little bit to keep the composition going. Or actually, in this case, and let's uh, do a preview again. All right, so that looks pretty cool. What I'm going to do now is export this scene into Adobe Premiere Pro. And I'm going to apply two effects there that is going to finalize my video. So I'm going composition and add it to the media encoder. And I'll see you back in Adobe Premiere Pro. All right, so here in Premiere Pro, I'm going to apply and just drag this into a new sequence. And what I want to do here is actually two things. The first of all, I want to change the color to match a little bit more to the bird box vibe, the color grading. And how I did that was actually super simple. I just took a print screen of one of their scenes, which I have right here. I'm going to drag this into my timeline and you can see how the colors look. I'm also going to scale this down a little bit. So I'm going to click on that and just scale it to fit the comp. And we have all the colors that are kind of the same as in my shot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to the color tab right here. And then I'm going to the hue um, HSL secondary actually. I'm going to click on my video. Or it's actually at the color wheels. So here at the color wheels we have a really cool color match option. So I'm going to click on comparison view while I have my original footage um, visible here. Comparison view. And then here we have a new timeline that we can script through it. And here we have the scene of the movie. Look what happens. Magic. Apply the match. Boom. We have our final vibe. It looks so much better. Uh, once you're done, you just uh, click here. And then we have our final video. We can delete the screen, uh, the screenshot that we just imported and look at the difference. It's amazing. And now we have our final look. One last thing that I applied is if I go back to my editing and my effects and presets, I applied a preset that you can actually get on our, on our website. It's called TC Camera Shake Preset. I will put a link in the description below. But what I like to do is go into the TC Low Shake and I'm going to apply a medium shot version 2 and apply this to my scene and look how cool that looks. Now we have some kind of handheld organic camera motion. It doesn't look like I filmed this on my own. It looks like someone was filming me coming closer really recording a movie just looks so much more professional all right so that's it for this video i hope you enjoyed it if you did give this video a like also be sure to subscribe to this channel for more and definitely hit the notification bell so you get notified when i upload new videos also check out our website we have a bunch to offer for any kind of digital creative and if you buy something from our website it helps to support this channel see you in the next one goodbye